0345 973. Well, we've got eight minutes before eight is the time where we've been talking a lot about these security measures and the initiative we saw with the Prime Minister alongside his counterparts from Australia and the United States. Let's get more details on that now from a former soldier, now Conservative MP and Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, who joins me now. Thank you for coming on. We learned yesterday the Prime Minister notes the challenges posed by the increasing assertiveness of the Chinese Communist Party. What's that in real terms, in your view, Minister? Good morning. Morning, Nick. It's really good to be with you. Look, we've spoken uh, a lot, actually, in in past years about the challenges that China is posing to us in different ways. And some of it's to do with defending intellectual property here at home or, or making sure we stand up for those Chinese citizens who are studying in our universities or defending those Hong Kongers who came here to find uh, the democracy that they lost uh, at home. But it's also today about making sure we stand with allies in the Pacific, in the South Pacific in particular, like Australia, but also some of the Pacific Islands, and making sure that we stand with our US uh, friends and allies in making sure we have the capabilities going forward. And I think what the Prime Minister has just done in San Diego is really a pretty phenomenal uh, achievement. The AUKUS deal that uh, we talk about is not just about nuclear boats, although it will give the Royal Australian Navy, the Royal Navy and the United States Navy interoperable boats, which means that we all get slightly cheaper boats, slightly cheaper technology, which is fantastic, but also the ability to operate in each other's boats around the world. It also deepens that partnership, not just uh, stating very clearly where we are today, but where we will be in the future. This is a deal that basically promises that we're going to be friends and allies uh, for for generations to come. And, And that is a fantastically powerful Powerful statement, not just to those who challenge us, but those who should support us and work with us as well. But the security minister, you'll be aware, and indeed this was addressed by the prime minister yesterday, we need to be aware for potential economic warfare in the United yeah. Kingdom from China. How does a submarine help with that, minister? Well, it does various different things. The first well, is... It doesn't help uh, with economic warfare, does it? Actually, yeah, it does actually, Nick. If you look at what it does in terms of getting jobs into Barrow, it develops our technical capabilities. If you look at what it does in terms of lowering the cost of nuclear energy by building Rolls-Royce engines, Rolls-Royce nuclear engines in Derby, it lowers the cost of our energy security. It massively improves our economic uh, capability. And of course, it demonstrates to the world that we're the kind of trusted partner and important friend in which it's worth investing. And so actually it boosts not just uh, the technical capabilities of our navies and uh, uh, and our engineering uh, capability for, for, for energy, but it actually increases the attractiveness of the UK markets. Uh, you know, I think that's a hugely important thing. It deepens the alliance that we have with Australia and the United States. That's great. I, I hope it will also deepen the alliance with the other Five Eyes partners, and I hope it will reach out as well as the AUKUS deal goes down what's called Pillar 2, and starts to include various other technical things, to include countries like Japan and Germany and France in different ways so that we actually build an even greater alliance than we've already got now. So should China be viewed as an epoch-defining threat or a challenge? Well, look, the language you can pick, because uh, I think it's important that we stay aligned with our two partners here, Australia and the United States, and they've gone for the word challenge. I'm fine with that. Uh, But we've also got to be uh, open to the fact that in some areas it's also a threat. And that's what the prime minister is talking about when he talks about economic security. He's absolutely right. Sadly, we have seen uh, intellectual property theft, and that's led the government to launch, as you've seen in the integrated review, the semiconductor strategy. It's why the prime minister asked me to lead uh, the Defending Democracy Task Force. And also why, uh, sadly, uh, in areas that you'll understand, I can't talk about the amazing work of our intelligence services, not just uh, MI5, but the others as well, including the National Crime Agency, is so important in defending this country against the challenges that we face, the threats that we face from some countries around the world, uh, including Beijing. Now, the reality is the most immediate one is, of course, Uh, from Russia. You don't need me to tell you about this, Nick, but if you look at what's going on in Ukraine, making sure we defend our allies and uh, support our friends there is absolutely part of defending European security and defending ourselves. Um, If the figures are correct, it was reported that the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, was hoping for an uplift of around £11 billion. It is reported he's getting a little under half of that. Uh, Were you to encounter a disgruntled Secretary of State in a corridor in the House of Commons, uh, how would you appease him? 
Well, Nick, you know I'm a former army officer. There is no way I'm going to be arguing for a lower defence budget. And if I could get more, I would always argue for more. But the reality is we've got to balance this across many other needs. And what I'm pleased about in the integrated review is that we get the boats that we need. We get the investment that we need, but we also get the intelligence capabilities we need. Quite rightly, a lot of integrated reviews uh, in recent years and recent generations have focused on defence. They've spoken, I mean, I remember the one that I worked on in in 2010, when I was still a soldier working for the chief of the general staff, the head of the army, General Sir Peter Wall, uh, that was entirely focused on defence capability. This one's different. And you highlighted it yourself, Nick. This one focuses on economic security. It focuses on intelligence. And one of my favourite bits, if you'll forgive me, I was a bit geeky to say I've got a favourite bit, but is right at the end where it talks about an open uh, open source intelligence hub because the reality is the internet, the open source information flow is now a domain of its own and realising that and realising that we've got to uh, develop the skills to operate in that, to exploit that are absolutely essential to keeping us safe in the future. I think this is a very forward leaning piece of work. I think it's a really important piece of work to keep Britain and British people safe for years to come. Last couple of questions. One does have a security aspect, which is, of course, the arrival of people in this country and the mm. illegal migration bill. Former Prime Minister Theresa May has criticised this. Uh, she says the legislation won't not work as the people, smugglers and migrants would find another way to get into Britain. Is the former PM right there? Is this bill actually not going to do what it's designed to do? Look, Nick, you and I have, uh, I mean, you've reported on on the, the, the absolute misery of human trafficking now for many, many years. And I, I remember, in fact, I was listening to your show when I heard about uh, Elan Kurdi, that young uh, Kurdish boy who yes. very sadly died. Uh, um, his body was washed up on, on, on the coast of Turkey in I mean, I was a I was, my my son was much younger then, and 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 I remember seeing that photograph of the border guard holding holding that child. And I mean, it was one of the most tragic scenes I think I've seen for a long time. This is this is a trade in 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 human misery, the like of which we haven't seen in such a long time. And it's it's not just about the channel. It's about the thousands of dead in the Sahara, the thousands of dead in the in the Mediterranean. This government is absolutely committed to ending it. Uh, and, and this bill is part of that process. You know, we really absolutely must make sure that this trade in human beings, this exploitation of human beings ends. It is absolutely vile and it's simply horrific. Lastly, on a completely unrelated story, I can't let you go without getting you into the Gary Lineker affair, but it's not Mr Lineker about whom I wish to speak, rather the chairman... Richard Sharp, who, for the leader of the opposition now, his position is increasingly untenable because of the rows over impartiality. Is he right? Is Sakir right? Look, quite rightly, this has been referred to the uh, the Office of the Commissioner for Public Appointments. Um, the, the reality is the BBC's impartiality is hugely important to all of us. It's absolutely uh, right that we have uh, a national news agency that's able to be completely impartial. It's also right that we have many others that are able to uh, have particular points of view, uh, some of which uh, we may support more than others. So I, I think that's uh, I think that's uh, incredibly important. But the the individual appointments, I'm afraid, I'm going to uh, I'm going to either leave to the BBC or I'm going to leave uh, to the Commissioner for Public Appointments. Security Minister Tom Tugendhat appearing here on LBC. Thank you very much for your time. One minute after eight news headlines. Lottie Morley. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, new data shows complaints by women 